Hi everybody, Dan Ullman, Matt Bernier. It's closing day Sunday at the Great Race Place Santa Anita. Several stakes races on tap, including the first leg of the 20 cent rainbow pick six. Race number five is the grade three American stakes. We're going a mile on turf, $100,000 is the purse. Get involved with a DRF bets account. Sign up at drf.com forward slash bet. Get $150 in risk free bets. Let's take a look at the field for the grade three American stakes and really one of the keys to this race Matt is whether the morning line favorite the number six River Boyne even participates in Steve Anderson's advance on DRF.com Jeff Mullins not so sure if he's going to run River Boyne found it a little bit odd too when you take a look at the jockey assignments not that having Kent Stormer aboard would be a bad thing but Flavian Pratt has ridden this horse basically for his entire career here in the United States He's listed on Bombard going out for Richard Mandela. So I found that a little bit peculiar. Um, look, it definitely changes the dynamic of the race if River Boyne doesn't go. If he does, I'm willing to take a shot against him. If he doesn't go, it just means a horse like Sharp Samurai is an overwhelming favorite. Well, you mentioned Bombard and Floppy and Pratt. Let's take a look at the time form U.S. pace projector for this race. So we are expecting Bombard to be out there on the early lead. And this horse has had his share of problems. He is six years old. He has only raced 10 times. He has not raced in almost a year due to a bone chip in his knee. When he's right, he's pretty good. His most recent race in the Wicker, way back during the Del Mar summer meet, he got a very nice trip. He broke from a far outside post. Pratt gave him a great ride. He was able to get into the two path all the way around. He ran well, he only got beat ahead. He has a bad habit of hopping back to his left lead in the late stages of the race. But boy, I don't think you waste prep races on horses like Bombard because you never know if he's gonna run again. Yeah, and strike while you have an opportunity. Like you say, he's had his physical problems. You want to take advantage. If you've got him sound and you've got him right, take your chance here. Uh, I am not totally convinced that he is as good going longer as he is going shorter. I know he's won a race out at a mile and an eighth in the past, but I do look at his overall body of work and say I think he might be better going six and a half down the hill or maybe those slightly shorter distances. Off this kind of layoff, maybe he is going to be the one cutting out the fractions. I think there's a cheaper speed down to the inside. I wouldn't be surprised if Bombard sits just off that one's flank. I wouldn't be surprised if Snazzy Dresser, the three, Law, Biden, Citizen, the four, they make the running and Bombard opts for a three-wide stalking trip. Let's talk about Snazzy Dresser. This horse has won his last two, albeit against much weaker competition. He deserves an opportunity in a short field, maybe to control the pace, but he obviously has to run the race of his career. Yeah, but plain and simple. There's really nothing else to sugarcoat about it. I mean, he's a nice horse. He's done a lot of good things. He needs to take his game to the next level. Even with this being a little bit of a softer grade stakes, it's just one of those instances he needs to really run the race of his life to be competitive. And the last time Law Biden Citizen, the number four, stepped on the turf, he won the grade three San Simeon going down the hill at six and a half furlongs. He beat Sistron that day, who came back to win the grade two Kona Gold on dirt with a 97 buyer speed figure. I do think Law Biden Citizen, perhaps like Bombard, is a bit more effective at shorter distances than a mile, but I think a pretty good trip is coming off a snazzy dresser, and maybe there's some point on the turn where he pokes his head in front. No, I agree with that. I, I do. I, th I think from a talent standpoint, he's right there with some of the best horses in this race, but I'm with you as far as that sort of what is his optimal distance. I think it's slightly shorter. We've seen him do some good work at six and a half, and it feels like these mile, mile and a sixteenth, those kind of races, boy, you get to the end, he starts getting a little bit short. I don't think you want that happening here on Sunday. Another horse going dirt to turfs, the seven, Majestic Eagle, will just throw his race out in the triple bend. He was 43 to one, and I don't think he can stand up on dirt. Two starts back, pretty good effort, and the non-winners are two other than ranks. The fourth place finisher came back to finish second in the graded Whittingham Stakes with a 93 buyer speed figure. My issue with Majestic Eagle is he doesn't win very often. He has a lot of seconds, and he's been stuck in that 2X condition for a very long time. Yeah, I mean, you, you hit the nail on the head. That's why I look at him. I think maybe you want to use him underneath if you're looking for something to spice up exotics. But seven times second or third stuck in the N2X ranks for what feels like an eternity. He's not for me. And before we get to our top selection, we'll discuss the horse that's likely to be the longest shot on the board. The number one Tartini is on a 16 race losing streak. He is eligible for a non-winners of two life. And he just got beaten in a $40,000 beaten claimer where he was 12 to 1. Uh, this just looks like a very tough spot. Yeah, he's a horse when he came over here, I thought maybe there was a little bit of promise. Maybe he'd figure some things out. He just hasn't been able to get through the N1X rank, let alone N2X. Uh, I just think he's an over tough. I think we're hoping that River Boyne runs because we think that the two sharp samurai, as we take a look at our top pick for this race, can beat River Boyne on the square. 
Of course, if Riverboyne scratches, it's really going to adversely affect the price on Sharp Samurai. Sharp Samurai was very game in winning the City of Hope Mile two starts back. If you bet Fly to Mars, that's one of the toughest beats, I think, ever. Because he had the lead every step of that race except the final one, right at the wire when Sharp Samurai got him. He got sick after that race, missed the Breeders' Cup mile. And the shoemaker, listen, he was the first horse to make a run at Bolo off the long layoff. He understandably tired. With that race under his belt, I think he sits a good trip in mid-pack. And I think Sharp Samurai, if he runs back to some of his races from last year, might be too much for River Boyne. Simply put, I think he's the best horse in the race, even if River Boyne goes. And like you say, from a price standpoint, it would be beneficial for us if River Boyne stays in, because then maybe you do get 9-5, to 2-1 to one on a horse like Sharp Samurai. I also wonder about that shoemaker. Run over ground with a little bit of cut in it. That was the first time he'd encountered that here throughout his career. I'm not saying he disliked it, but I wonder if he's better on real firm turf. I think that's what you get here on Sunday. I just think he trips out and is the best horse. Assuming River Boyne runs, I'll go 2, 6, 5, and 4. Give me numbers. Assuming he goes, I go 2657. Race number five, the Grade 3 American kicks off the 20 cent rainbow pick six on closing day Sunday at Santa Anita. Get involved with a DRF Bets account. Head on over to drf.com forward slash bet and find out how you can get $150 in risk free bets. Approximate post time for the Grade 3 American 303 Pacific. Good luck.